Hello and welcome back. I hope all of you guys are well. I hate to ask you this, and I really do hate this in videos, but please like, subscribe and share because there is uh, an issue with YouTube and it's proving to be a problem. So, hi. First things first, I've been rereading The Widow's Son by Ryan Williamson. This is a Weird West tale in itself and it's beautifully done. Pause and read because if you I'm going to put a link to this. I've talked about his book on my channel before and I will say he's a phenomenal writer. There's a short story collection and other stuff in the works that I can't wait for. So there we go. The Widow's Son. But on my reread, it got me thinking about the Weird West genre. Because Weird West is a genre that predates its description. So the earliest Weird Western tale that we know of was a Robert E. Howard story published in the 1930s, very early 30s. And the term Weird West wasn't really a thing until the 70s because of DC Comics, of all things. There are so many books within that genre, and I'm going to cover, kind of, think of this video as an intro to it. That's the best way to describe it. Think of this video as an intro to the Weird West genre. And I hope you guys enjoy it. So, Robert E. Howard, as I mentioned, absolutely phenomenal writer. There is no way around that. Um, just, I, I, there's no such thing as a nice uh, Robert E. Howard novel at the moment. And I'm trying to track them down which is proving to be an expensive undertaking. I do own a lot digitally, and that seems to be the most accessible way to get a hold of his work at the moment. Uh, other than Conan, a lot of his work is published in like drips and drabs, and a lot of focus on Conan. And there's nothing wrong with that. Conan is fantastic, but there's so much more and depth and richness to his work that I cannot say that you need to go out there and just read it for yourself. Now... Where do we start with this one? You've got more recent ones. I'll focus on more recent ones, but a good example of Weird West is a uh, Dead in the West uh, from 1983. It was a zomb um, zombie's rise after an unjust, um, unjustifiably horrible situation in which a native man got lynched, and he cursed the town of Mud Creek in Texas. And that's such a good book. <laughs> and then there was a more recent one, The Crossing, in 2004, which is set in a cult novel, and it's set in uh, 1848 Arizona, I think. Um, I've not read that one in a long time. And the genre has crossed into TV shows such as Wild Wild West, we ignore that got awful Will Smith movie, but it exists, the animated adventures of the Lone Ranger, which definitely brought elements of the Weird West in. And there was even... Um, the anthology series, The Twilight Zone, featured a handful of Western episodes, which are fantastic. There was also sort of um, steampunk elements that come in, and that's something else I'm going to talk about. A weird Western is a hybridization of genres. So I love Westerns. I grew up on Westerns. I grew up on those old serials and those movies. And as I got older, I read the books. And I will say this. They're absolutely phenomenal. There's some good stuff. There's some bad stuff, obviously. Lots of alternative histories. There's also a lot of video games that kind of focus on the Weird West. Undead Nightmare, which was an expansion of Red Dead Redemption back in 2010, which was fantastic. Um, I played that to death in recent years, Weird West, which was a uh, 22, which was a top-down action game. And um, had randomized elements for each playthrough. So there, there is a lot there. Now, Weird West seems to exist purely as an indie genre at the moment, but I say give it time because there is a lot in that genre that is massive, and people laugh at indie books, but you know what? A book like this would never have been published via a traditional publisher. Follow him on Twitter. He's fascinating and a great artist too. He does book cover services, so do follow him. The thing that I do find interesting is that the Weird West as a whole has 
in genre have been kind of amalgamated into other things. So it's an amalgamation of genres to start with, but it's been amalgamated and bought into other stuff. I mean, Supernatural has elements of the Weird West. That's a great show, by the way. I don't know anyone who hasn't seen it, so... But that has elements. The elements and the base of the genre is... I mean, there's... It can be very serious. It can be very dark. It can be comedy. There's a lot of um, hilarious books and short stories written that are fantastic, by the way. But there's this whole list of books that I could be here for, like, a week talking about. And again, they cross over. Steampunk westerns are part of the Weird West subgenre. And steampunk westerns are fantastic. I love those. So it's always that thing of looking for the right books, looking for those stories, looking for those writers. And I wish more was published in the mainstream. I wish more people were talking about this genre. There's the fantasy western, which in itself is an amazing little thing. Alternative histories, like I said, I've read quite a few of those over the years. And just, I can wax lyrical about Robert E. Howard's work from start to finish. Like, there is this phenomenal body of work there. I mean, another great science fiction Weird West tale is Outer Range, and that's an Amazon series. That's fantastic and so well done. Like, science fiction western that's actually intelligent. Intelligent television is what we're kind of lacking on screen as we speak. And, I mean, it's not for everyone. If you like things a little bit more explanatory, you might struggle with the series. But, I mean... You come into it, and I want to do another video about Robert E. Howard. I talked about his work in a video a long time ago, which you can probably find. I'm going to try and link these videos in the comments. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, head up, look for them, because there's some phenomenal stuff. And just, you know, I do love a classic Western as well. I do. I, I love those Golden Age Westerns. And having access to these books and these stories is so important. And it's sad that they get treated so badly by publishers. Because they seem to be pushed aside for the other things. Be it Robert E. Howard's Conan, which I love as well. But everything else he seems to have done has been kind of pushed aside. So... And you can buy anthologies of his Weird West tales, by the way. They do exist. Um, eBay is a good place to look. But like I said, there's new, there's old. It crosses into every media possible. Video games, movies, um, comic books, even novels. You name it, it's there. And it's such an important genre that is completely and utterly niche and completely and utterly put into a little bubble and I might do a video on the weird westerns of Robert E. Howard because I think we need to talk about them more. But there we go. So this is my little intro to the weird west. If you guys want more of this, please tell me because I would be really curious about it. And I have a lot to say on this. And I don't want to do a five hour video just rambling about weird westerns. So tell me what you think in the comments below. Like, subscribe, hit the little bell icon because that's really important. And I will talk to you guys a bit later.